I'm Jamie, and this is Dom. We're from the band Code Orange, and we're sitting here with Kenny and Johnny from Typo Negative. Say what's up, everybody. What's up, guys? Hey. Uh, we're going to open up these fucking vinyls, and sorry. Yes! I'm next <laughs> We're going to open up these yes, records and get in. Yes! Yes! You going to open that thing up? Let's open it you up. Better, you better be careful. Dude, you help me. Let's be honest. I ain't helping you. <laughs> All right. You're on your own, kid. <laughs> What's the matter? You never put on a rubber before? <laughs> Is this? I don't think. Are up? I don't think this equates to that. Yeah. This might have been all you put it on, and that <laughs> it did not work out. All right, let's get it. All right. It's so black. It's so black. Black on black. All hey, right, just show the camera. Ooh, oh yeah. Oh, Look at that. Yes. Look at that. Oh, well, show the side. My life's work. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh. All right, so this has been close. the worst moment of my life. So, <laughs> so now you're gonna open this thing up and bring up some horrible memories. Let's bring it up. All right, <clears throat> slow, deep, and hard. Let's do it. Well, we can't show it, can we? Oh, we oh, can no, show it. Yeah, we can show it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wait, 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 wait. You can show this one. You can show this one for some reason. Flip it around. So, every, I'm pretty close. To Coney Island still, so like I have this ritual I do with my 17 year old. We go see the fireworks on Friday night. So this is actually that's in th these were in front of Nathan's, the classic Nathan's in um, Coney Island. In Coney Island, and it was four phone booths back then when actually people used. I think those phone booths are still there. Yeah, yeah. No, and that's what I'm getting to. Oh. They removed two of them. There's only two left. <laughs> I, I noticed it the other night. I was there last last Friday. I was like, oh shit. There. They took the other two phone booths out. Two. And they took, the ones they took out was Sal and Peter. So only me and Josh's phone booths are oh, for around the island now, yeah. Wow. I swear. A lot of people don't even know what a pay phone is. Damn, look at how tight my ass was yeah. like 28 years ago, man. Uh, to be honest, you know what? that's Peter, an ass we can show. Peter, right there. Yeah. Yeah. Peter, Peter oh, he got pissed at me for years because he was like, how come you're not holding? You don't look like you're pissing. Oh, and sometimes you free you free piss. I pee like that. Yeah, you can piss you, like do that. You hold it when you pee. If you ever go to like a wrestling event, they're holding it like that, and their pants are like all the way down. Yeah, <laughs> man, you just let it go, right? You let it go. Anyhow, these two these two boots are gone. Oh, uh, let's open it up. Let's see. Okay, oh, now we got. Oh, this is that nice looks looking. Very. Right, please don't drop it again. Mm. Here we go. This is the D train. This is actually the D train. And, uh, I don't know if it was the day we did this photo shoot. It was the day, same day we did the photo shoot at the phone booths. Yeah, pull out the records. Hold on, let's see. Those at fault. <laughs> Those at fault. I love that. Yeah. So you haven't, have you seen this yet? Nice. No. I have never seen this, no. I mean, I've seen some of the stuff in it. Obviously, this picture was taken in Josh's house. Good. They got the, in his master bedroom. You got the green right. It's good. They got the green, they got finally. The green. They got it right. Good shade. He's the color police. Yeah, will you tell us about that? <laughs> tell, tell us about the color policing that was going on. It's very like It's a frustrating, ongoing thing that's been, it's been going on for years. This is pretty trying, close. Trying to get the green right. This Antone 369. Yeah. This right here, this right here, like when we first got together, Peter was still working for the Parks Department. And, you know, obviously the main color for Parks Department was this color. It was like a puke green. Mm-hmm. And, you know, he didn't, he never wanted to detach himself from Brooklyn or the Parks Department. So he made this the official color of the band. And I remember um, when the band first started rehearsing, we were rehearsing in Quentin Road in Marine Park in Brooklyn between 31st and 32nd. It was uh, Sal's, Sal's father owned, owned the building and we had this basement space. Like, oh, let's build, a, let's build a, you know, a room to rehearse in. This is before we were even typo negative. We were probably repulsion then, or a new minority, mm -hmm. one of the names, the previous names before typo. And uh, so me and Sal built a room. We built that out of drywall and stud, you know, just built it out. We had the only toilet was a bucket. We used like a um, five pound spackle bucket to pee in. Oh. <laughs> and uh, we <laughs> built out the room. And people was like, well, you know, I want to put my two cents, so I'll paint it. So it was like, July, you know, in Brooklyn. And he comes down with the cheapest park department, parks department paint. It was like this, this horrible color, oil paint. Oh, Jesus. Paints it. 
One year later, it still wasn't dry. You back up into the wall, you got <laughs> all oh, green paint all over you, and it's still dry. Have it. So that could kind of permeated throughout the band's, you know, color. You know, it was black and that horrible green. And and every record, it was very specific, and every shirt. Well, Peter, needed, had, oh, yeah. Peter needed Absolutely. consistency. He needed continuity. You know, otherwise, you know, he would strangle you. Yeah. <laughs> the green's wrong. <laughs> yeah. And that amazing. carries over till today. But yeah. It has to be. He's the new color police. You're the color police now? Yeah. Well, it's important. It has to be. So it's this, so this, this, yeah. this record actually was, when we first got together and we decided, you know, we're going to be a band. We're going to make a record. Um, we had, before we had, just before we had built up room, it was, it was on uh, Fillmore Avenue, Marine Park, like leading on the fence, Marine Park. And um, we decided we're going to make a record. Okay, but first we had to make side. a demo. Let's make a demo, yeah, go down to Systems 2. And Systems 2 Recording Studio was on, at the time, it was on um, Avenue Garrison U. Avenue and Avenue U, right? It was like right off from Marine Park. Uh, Mike and George. Mike Marciano was, he was the main uh, producer, engineer there. So we went in there and uh, obviously we needed money to charge money and Josh went to his mom. He borrowed six grand from his mom to do the demo. And um, I just remember him driving me f goddamn crazy, man. Six dollars a minute! Get it right! It's my mother's money! <laughs> and I, oh my God. Six and this record is complex. I mean, it goes through so many different styles oh, of music. Is, yeah. Tempo changes absolutely. from hardcore to dirge, one beat per minute, and I was overwhelmed, you know what I mean? I was like, you know, we were rehearsing maybe like six months at the time, not even. You know, and you had to do it live, right on the spot. You know, and uh, it was definitely a learning experience. But we never expected it to become the record that was going to be released worldwide and be you know, a classic record. Absolutely. It was a demo. So, like all those like ten minute songs, or, like one guitar. We did track. them all through, straight through. Whoa! You had to memorize everything. Yeah, That's we were done with all the basic tracks in three days, four that, days. That is so stressful. Yeah. I can't even imagine that at all. Now, yeah, you can't because you're of a generation later where you have all this time on Pro Tools in your closet, oh, yeah. in your house. Go, exactly. oh, let me do that over. You can keep doing it. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, Let's yeah. do it to a click. It was it's amazing. It sounds any overdubs, so clean. None of them were to a click, so any overdubs had to be done with no click. You know, you just had to you know, listen to it and, and, you know. But there's something about that because you listen to records like this now and you try to learn how to emulate that now. It's a vitality. That's Music's yeah. not like linear yeah, like yeah, with yeah. time. It doesn't, the technology doesn't really make it better. I don't, I don't like think it does. I think it bogs it down in some ways. It improves it in some, but like, um, like as far as, you know, you don't have to cut tape anymore. Yeah, you know, cutting tape. Yeah. That's nice. Freedom of ideas. But that's how we did it. And it was just a demo. You know, we released it under the name Repulsion at mm -hmm. the time, locally. Dave Bratt's got one of those sitting in his Yeah, mind. he's got the yeah. sealed cassette sitting in there. I was like, oh. He yeah, was like, talking. nope. <laughs> he has it like, like a prime spot. He's, really pr yeah. he's proud of it. <laughs> and uh, you know, at the time, you know, we were trying to get a record deal and then um, Peter was already previously signed to uh, Roadrunner for Carnivore. And they just stepped in and, you can't sign to anybody but us. So. Right. <laughs> And we're like, okay, we're gonna make the record over again. Nope. They just put the demo out as the record. <laughs> <laughs> so it was bang yeah. for their buck. That's that's how they do it. They love to squeeze it. But it worked out, so that's amazing. Well, you know, at the time it didn't work out. It only sold like forty thousand <laughs> copies. It was you know, we that were ain't bad though. failures. Yeah. Back, back then that down. was garbage. 40, back but then, you know, yeah. lo locally that's, that's it kinda right, worked huh? out locally. I mean, uh, like we started building a following locally. We used to play like Zone Decay and we played Lamar. And uh well the first show at Lamar we did like we played the entire record, which is like what, seventy minutes long. You know, half of it's like one beat per minute. <laughs> and it was mostly a, a, a hardcore following coming down from Peter's previous Carnival. For sure, you know? absolutely. So we were waiting to kill each other the whole time. We <laughs> doing, we were playing like, <laughs> and they were like running around in a circle trying to beat each other. <laughs> <laughs> that carries on to this day, that same and exact then, type of thing happens. And then um, we, we had this one song at the time, which is very experimental, we called it Screwdriver. And it was basically just me and Peter with the screwdrivers. 
on stage and feedback and distortion. Oh, it was organized noise. Yeah, it was just like a screwdriver going. <laughs> For like 15 minutes. <laughs> People are like, punch me. They're waiting for the spot to. And then, and then halfway through the set, we didn't even get through the record, we played a carnival cover. And everybody just started destroying each other, and then they started fighting, and the entire audience left the building to beat each other up outside of Lamar. And there was nobody there. It was five people there. We play like 45 minutes more to nobody. Was there, was there like a... So it, what I'm saying is, yeah, yeah. if you think this is a success at the time, believe me, it was not. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> was there a thought of, like, when you were doing that, of kind of trying to go against what he had done in the past. Oh, we always did. We always kind of like went against everything. I mean, our first tour was, it was typo negative, biohazard, and exploited. Oh, yeah. That's 1991. An amazing tour. That's a lineup. That's awesome. uh, uh, yeah, it was amazing for me. I had a friggin' great time. Yeah. <laughs> the wheels yeah. would fall off the van every two seconds, man. You can imagine Pete Steele and, you know, in yeah. a van. Oh, man. And uh, it was great. I mean, most of the shows were canceled. Because of, <laughs> because of the exploited, you know, Waddy's friggin' drug deals and, you know, try, not getting into Canada. And after a while, you know, like these guys, it was none more negative. You know, I just left the van for Typo and, because they were kicking me out every other day anyway. So I, 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 I ended up driving with the exploited and we almost died twice on the highway. That is amazing. And then, uh, you know, that tour ended in Kansas. Pete clicked his heel three, three times and I'm leaving. Oh, goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> it's done. The last show was at the Outhouse in Kansas. And this is like 1991. At the, at, the time, at the time, there was this kid with dreads. He used to run these hardcore shows literally in the middle of a cornfield. Like going to the show, like dust would be kicking up and you'd see like the band in front of you and it'd be like a dust cloud from miles. Oh, yes. We've definitely and it played was a, some cornfields. It was a concrete room the size of this room. Yeah. You know, that they, they threw you. you it know never changes. Yeah. Somehow yeah, no. it's 2000. There you go. And 18 and 19, and that's still, that's still the same. No, nah, that was stuff. it for Peter. He was like, we're going home. <laughs> no, he tapped out there. You want to put it on? Put yeah. it on, bro. I'm allowed to touch that, right? Yeah. <laughs> I think just click the button and then it'd be good. Put it on top of the belt. Oh, you guys going to play this shit? Yeah, let's play it. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. Not. Hey, we're not, we're just going to play it lightly. How about we're that? We'll keep it in the It'll background. Quiet. Set the vibe. It'll be in the background. Throw it on. All right, well, we know what song we can't play. Can't you play Elvis? <laughs> we, we know what song we can't play on this stream. As long as it's slow, we can do what we want, I think. That was the start, anyway. It was a very, very modest start. It's probably Were, my favorite typo record. Locally built. Really? Yeah. Wow. Probably, yeah. Really? Were you oh. in, it was just you guys in the van, or did you ever have to get, like... He was, was working for us. Yeah, yeah, he was yeah, driving you know, the van. I, know, I, was yeah. <laughs> I was in the van. <laughs> He was driving for us. Johnny was working for us at the time. So that's, was, that's how he started. He's the same thing with us. He joined the band after just yeah. coming with us for so drum long. Drum tech driver. Well, yeah. <laughs> Whatever. Me kicking him while he was like the drum tech, I guess. Yeah. The dumb tech? Yeah. Dumb, yeah, truly. <laughs> dumb tech.